Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to model steel and concrete buildings in RAM Structural System. In this series of videos, we are focusing on modeling the three-story structure that you see on your screen. For this video, we're going to focus particularly on the upper two floors of the structure, which consists of steel columns, steel beams, steel joists, and steel cantilevers. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model in the RAM modeler. Now the first thing we're going to do is select the material and the layout that we plan to be working on. To do this, we're going to come up to our toolbar and select steel from the material pull down list and select the steel floor from the layout list. Now as we begin modeling, what we're going to notice is that we have a toolbar at the top of our screen called the layout toolbar. These represent the different types of elements that can be modeled within RAM structural system. When you select a particular type of object through the layout toolbar, additional tools will become available to help you model that type of system and also assign properties to it. For this level, we are going to be modeling some steel columns, steel beams, and also steel cantilevers. We're gonna model our steel columns first, our vertical elements. So we're selecting the layout column icon and then we're going to choose from one of these two options. We can add a column on grid or off grid. Now I'm going to use the on grid option because when you model a steel column at a grid location, then all of your reports later on for your analysis and design will be able to reference that column through its grid intersection, which will make interpreting my data and results easier. So let's go ahead and choose on grid. Now I'm going to start by entering some parameters. For the column type, I'm going to select a standard column. Now in a standard column, it will extend down from the current layout to the level below. Next, I'm going to enter the framing type we're going to be modeling. I'm going to choose gravity for this particular member that I'm working on. Now in RAM structural system, you are able to designate certain members as either gravity or lateral members. Gravity members are capable of resisting gravity forces only, including dead load, live load, and snow load. And lateral members can also support lateral loads such as wind and seismic. For this training today, we're going to be focusing on modeling gravity members, but we do have some additional training courses to show you how to model, analyze, and design a vertical lateral load resisting system through RAM structural system. Next, we're going to select the shape that we can choose. Now, RAM structural system allows I sections, rectangular HS, and round HS sections for its standard columns. I'm going to start by selecting an I section. And then finally, I'm going to enter its orientation. And let's go ahead and say it's going to be parallel to the X or radial grids. Now I have two different options for adding steel columns on grid. I can use a single option, which means I'm going to manually click all the grid intersections for which this column should be placed. Or I can use the fence option. With fence, I'm going to draw a fence somewhere in the plan and whichever grid intersections fall within that fence will get this column. So let's go ahead and start by using the fence option. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fence around all of grid lines C through G. So here's my fence, and everywhere we had a grid intersection, got a column. Now I want to create some additional columns, but I do want to change some of the parameters. So if you right click in the RAM modeler, it will always bring you back to the previous dialog or command that you were using, and the dialog will already be filled in with all of the information you already provided to it. This will give me an option to change some of the parameters. So I'm going to select a rectangular HS section and I'm going to change the yield strength to 46 KSI. I'm going to go ahead and use the single command, and then I can click on each grid intersection. Now, just to give you some additional assistance, what you're going to notice is in the status bar, every time you use a particular command in the RAM modeler, it'll give you advice on what the program's expecting you to do next in order to fulfill that command. Now at this point, we're done modeling our standard steel columns and we're ready to move on. So we're gonna start by modeling our steel beams. 
So I'm going to return to my layout toolbar and select the layout beam icon. And again, some additional tools will become available. Just as we saw with the steel columns, we have an on-grid command and an off-grid command. And we're going to start by modeling our steel girders. So I'm going to model those on grid. Again, I can enter all the parameters. I'm going to be working on a gravity framing system today. Um, for gravity steel members, I can assign them as an I section, a rectangular HS section, or a channel section. And I'm going to use an I section. Now for this particular level, I am planning on modeling a composite slab on top, which will be basically a metal deck with a concrete topping. Now RAM Structural System is able to calculate the composite properties once a slab is modeled on top of that system. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I select composite here. Lastly, I'm going to enter the appropriate yield strength of steel for the type of member I'm creating. Let's go ahead and finish up. And again, we have our single and fence options here. I'm going to go ahead and select fence. And I'm going to draw a fence around grid lines th C through G. And basically what that will do is if you have columns already located there, it'll choose to model steel beams connecting all of the columns in the orthogonal directions. If I right click, I can return right back to that additional dot dialog and I can make any changes. Here I'm going to say I want to choose a rectangular HS beam and I'm going to go with 46 KSI. And if I click the single button, the program is going to be asking me for two clicks, one at the starting end of the member and one at the ending end. In addition to adding steel beams on grid, it's also important to understand how to add them off grid and to use the different options that are available there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select the add steel beam off grid command. Now everything at the left hand side of this dialog is pretty much the same as we had seen for the on grid command, but now we have several different graphic modes available. For this training, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to model a beam parallel to a beam. Now this type of command or a lot of these graphic modes would depend upon some modeling elements such as beams or columns to already be in the model before you activate these commands as it will use those as a starting point or basis for knowing where to put these members. So I'm going to say parallel to a beam, but I want it 10 feet adjacent to that beam. So let's go ahead and say 10 feet. Uh, you can change the units to feet or inches if that makes it easier. And then we'll go ahead and finish off by clicking on the Add button. And what I can do is I can select any beam in the model that I, I want to use as a basis for modeling this member. I'm going to select this member here. When you select a member, it's going to turn white. And then some additional lines will appear on the screen. So it knows I want to model this beam 10 feet off of the one I just selected, but which direction? So I'm going to go ahead and click between grid lines D and E, and there's my new beam being added. Let's go ahead and return to that dialog, and let's use a different graphics mode. Here I'm going to go with a beam to beam, and I'm going to choose distance and angle. I'm going to say the angle is relative to the x-axis. And then I can enter um, the angle here. In addition, I can enter a distance. Let's go ahead and say eight feet. And we're going to finish this off by clicking the Add button. Now again, I can select a particular member that I am using as a basis. And then the program is going to ask me, well, which end of the member am I applying this to? Let's go ahead and say off this member. Now this particular command will require three clicks. So I said I want it to be eight feet off the end of this member, but on which side? I'm going to go ahead and draw it down there. Now that we've modeled our main steel girders, we're ready to start modeling our steel infill beams. Now I could use any of the tools that I've already shown you in order to model them on grid or off grid as needed. But we have an additional tool for modeling steel beams, which is to add a generation of beams between uh, a certain bay of framing. So let's go ahead and click on that tool. Again, the layout steel beam icon is selected. 
and then we'll go ahead and say add generation. Here I'm going to enter in the parameters for all of the beams that represent this generation. They're going to be gravity beams. We are going to be using I sections, 50 KSI, and composite. Then I have to enter some pieces of information for a graphics mode to help the program place these members. I'm going to tell the program I want to do a number of equal spaces per beam, and I want four equal spaces. The angle is going to be 90 degrees relative to the selected beam line. And then let's go ahead and click the Add button. Now again, the status toolbar will be able to tell me what the program is expecting as you know the next command. So what you're going to do is you're going to enter your starting end of your generation. I'm going to click on C1. Now you could do one bay at a time, or since everything is, since every single bay in this line needs a generation of beam, I can just go and click on then C5. Then do I want to add them to the left or the right of this member? Let's go ahead and click on the right. And with every single bay, it ended up adding four spaces, so three infill still beams. Let's go ahead and continue this process. I'm going to click on E5 and then E1. Then I'm going to click to the left. Now this over here is going to represent a slab opening. So had I used grid line D as my basis, it would end up drawing members within that space, which is not exactly what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead again and click on E1 to E5, and then we can finish this process off. Now, if you need to change the orientation, you could just click a different member and then draw those infill beams as needed. Now, to finish off this floor layout, we are also going to create some steel cantilevers. So with the layout steel beam icon still selected, we're going to find our add cantilever tool. Now we have two different types of cantilevers we can create in the RAM modeler. We can create an extension cantilevers, or that would be a cantilever with a backspan. Now the properties and orientation of the backspan beam are automatically applied to the cantilever end. We can also create a stub cantilever. A stub cantilever is a cantilever that's framing off of a column, a wall, or the side of a beam without a backspan. Now the properties of the stub cantilever are independent of any other framing. Let's go ahead and create some stub cantilevers first. So we're going to enter the stub cantilever and then all of its properties. To add the cantilever, we're going to enter some graphics information. We're going to input our cantilever as cantilever length. Let's enter a length of 8 feet. And we are going to be modeling it off of a column for this exercise. We'll go ahead and give it an angle of 0 degrees. And that's going to be relative to the x axis. We can finish this off by clicking the Add button. Now we can go ahead and select any column within the model on the perimeter for which to model this cantilever. I'm going to go ahead and select the column at grid intersection G4. Once you select the column, it's going to give me a direction. So I told it I wanted an orientation of 0 degrees. So would I like to go to the left or the right? And I'm going to go ahead and go to the right. And I can keep adding these cantilevers as needed. Next, let's go ahead and add some extension style cantilevers. So I'm going to right click to return to this dialog, select extension, and I'm going to also input my cantilever length as 8 feet. Now the rest of the graphics modes aren't required because I'm going to use the backspan to identify where to place the cantilever. So let's go ahead and click on the Add button. And then the status bar is telling me to select the backspan beam. So let's go ahead and select this beam. Now, which end do I want to add the cantilever off of? I'm going to click on the end that goes to grid line G. And I can just keep modeling my cantilevers as needed. Now this completes the process for modeling my steel floor layout, which included modeling steel columns, steel girders and steel infill beams, and also steel cantilevers. Now that we have finished modeling all the structural members on our second floor plan, we can go ahead and again return to the 3D view of the structure to see what we have so far. Here we can see our concrete level, which we had created in a previous video, and our steel level on top of that. 
To return to the RAN modeler, we're going to select File, then Exit. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.